Fox 19 now presents Tri-State Travel Treasures with Ken Baker. Hey guys, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays of the season. Matter of fact, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. You know what makes Thanksgiving so delicious? Pie. We are in Hamilton at Hyde's cooking up some pie. Hey guys, we're in the kitchen of Hyde's Restaurant. Uh, this is Amy. Yes. Amy Hyde. Yep. Say hello to the people at home. Hello. Okay, so uh, Butler County, we're up here. You guys, you're the pie queen, right? One Would you say them. that? One of them? Uh, I don't. It's all right to like be like, yes, I'm the pie queen. Yes, we're not. Okay, she's <laughs> humble. Uh, how many pies do you do a year? Thousands. Thousands. Absolutely thousands. Thanksgiving, how many do you think? I think you guys do this thing called Pie Palooza or something, right? We do every year, yes. yes. Pie Palooza. What is Pie Palooza? It is the day before Thanksgiving. It's our biggest day of the year. And we have a drive through pie for online orders yes. for people to come and pick up and have pie as part of their Thanksgiving. Meal. I see you have an empty little shelf for us. What kind yes. of pie are we making today? Today we're going to make banana cream. Banana cream. What's the first step? The first step is to go ahead and take off that jacket. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get it. Ready all. to go. Wash hands and get gloves on. This is a, is, you said this is Laura, right? Laura. Laura. Laura, can I get in here? What kind of filling is this? So this is for a pie. What do you got in here? What's your? Uh, if you want to give us the, the secret. This is our vanilla filling. Uh-huh. And we have milk. Oh. We have egg yolks. Yeah. We have a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. Vanilla. Vanilla. And that's it. There's and all the love in the world, there. right? Yeah. Okay, I know. How long does this cook? Cooks for quite a while. You gotta keep it cooking and make sure that you don't hit anything on the bottom to pull up any little burnt little brown pieces. Bits, I guess so. Exactly. I who this, made this recipe? This is a recipe that's been in my family since high to the open. It's like 78 years, right? Yes, correct. All right. I know you're mixing that, but I know it has to cool, so let's let it do a thing. It'll bubble away. So while the uh, filling is cooling, Amy, we're making a banana cream, is that right? Banana cream. Okay, what do we do now while that's over there cooling? Now we're gonna cut our bananas. But these, these Chiquita bananas, Chiquita bananas. And, uh, how many do we need? We're gonna use three per pie. You remember that song? Chiquita, you wanna dance? <laughs> Come to say, you don't dance? Your hair looks good, it looks like it would wave, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're like this crazy kid. All right, how do we do this? Show me okay, the highest Okay, so we're gonna way. cut off both ends, okay? Because it's easier to peel. Okay. This way. Come this way. Okay. We're checking anything black, black, we're okay. All right. We're gonna go in here. Can I do it the old fashioned way while you're sure. doing that? Do you have any fun stories about maybe your grandma, grandpa, put you to work on the bananas or anything like that? I peel potatoes. I was the official potato peeler. Well, I mean, I guess you gotta yeah. start from the bottom and work yeah. all the way up, right? Windows, yeah, clean how the did, lots. How did you guys become the official uh, pie people here during Thanksgiving? What's the story behind that? Well, I think traditionally pie is always a Thanksgiving-based dessert. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we make our pie. We try to make all of the pie for Pie Palooza yeah. within a few hours of your pickup time. Oh, so it's a nice. fresh pie. We're ready to go. Uh, we have a drive through service, like I said, in that you don't even have to come in. You just pick it up out in the parking lot in our tent. And get it going. And get out you go. How about I finish this up while you grab our filling? Sounds great. All right, I got to get Amy out of the freezer. Amy, let's go, sister. Okay. We're waiting on the, uh, I've got the, the deliciousness, the filling. <laughs> okay. Ooh, what do we got? That looks so good. I feel this like I could stick a spoon in there. Do we need and a spoon? So we do need a spoon. We'll go right up here. Okay. And you want to stir it. Give it a little off? stir. How long did we let this cool? So this has been a day. One day. One day. This is what it'll look like when she pours it in. Wow. What's your, I know that you probably want to pull your hair out during Thanksgiving because it gets so busy, but what's your favorite part when you go home and it's all done the day after Thanksgiving and you sold thousands of pies? <laughs> like, what is that feeling like? Well, it's good to know that we're part of so many Thanksgivings. Yeah. It's become a tradition. A lot of people come and eat and pick up their pie yeah. with grandparents and grandchildren, and um, it's become a big tradition for a lot of people. I love it. Do so, I need to squeeze some linen on top sure of this bad boy? Give it a little shake. For the people at home, why are we putting the uh, lemon? The lemon keeps the bananas from turning black from that the oxidization a, of the that, banana. That is a good tip. Is that enough or keep going? Or yep, that's, that's fine. Perfect. I'll and I guess you don't out. really um, taste the lemon, right? You do not. Okay, cool. So we turn stir, it around, stir, stir it around, get it. 
And then we're gonna go and like this. That looks good. Fantastic. Do you ever sing while you're cooking? Sometimes. What do you want to sing right now? Well, I'm not singing today. What's your favorite song to sing? I'll sing it for you. Well, I do like Christmas carols. Have a holly year. jolly Christmas. Yeah. It's the best time <laughs> of the year. You don't want to sing a little bit? No. I no, you don't. No. <laughs> All right, after this, we're going to put on that beautiful topping, yes, right? Yes, this is the meringue. Tom, get in here and check this out. Look how beautiful that is. Gorgeous. Amy, I think we are ready for the meringue. Actually, okay. why am I calling you out to you? This we're is ready. Your, we're ready for it. Okay, this wow. is the tricky. That is gorgeous. Oops. Gorgeous, just so pillow. How did you get it so fluffy? Egg white, oh. cream of tartar. So we'll put that over there. Okay. Okay, would you like to try? I, I mean, I'll try. What am I doing, just smoothing? Yep, so you can push it. You take it and kind of push it into like the corner. That? Yep. Kind of push it and let it grab the edges. Holy cannoli. You know my uncle, he's from the south, he would say, good googly goo. Because this looks so good. Here, I'll let you take over to okay. the, the profess. So here we go. I'm going to do this. You guys aren't skimping, are you? No, we like a big meringue. Wow. That looks okay. so good. So we're going to do this. Can so I like good. a little Some pink. meringue pink? You can do a little bit like that. The pie, I know you said that you're one pie queen. I'm gonna just call you the pie queen. Is that all right? Well, she has been dubbed on Triple T, the pie queen. <laughs> or should I wait till I try it? You should try it. You should try it. <laughs> Next, are we throwing this in the now oven? we're gonna put it right in the oven. All right, dun dun dun. Turn that up a little bit. Burr, 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 take like this. It's gonna open. Oh, that way, okay. So it's gonna, gonna open like this way. It. Yep, all right, yeah, okay. you're good. There we go. Bam. Just put it right here in the middle. Yep, that's fine. Beautiful. Amy, how long is that gonna cook? It's gonna cook for about 10 minutes. What should we do until... Let's go eat some pie. Yes. Ooh, take a look, guys. Here comes my pie. Bring me my pie. This is fantastic. Amy, this looks good. You wanna sit down? I just thought, sure. Have a seat, Parker. What do we got here? This is our apple pie. Apple pie. Just traditional apple. And this one is? This is a chocolate meringue. I'm so pumped. Which one do you want me to eat first? I think apple. Is that your favorite? I love apple. You love apple. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Okay. Thank you. Should I do a big bite or a small one? All right. That's good. That's phenomenal. What's the secret, real quick, to your apple pie? What kind of apples do you use? Because I know Gala and all that, I don't know, whatever. We what use a you? mix. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use a local apple from some of our markets, but we do have a different mix. My favorite, this crust is crazy. That is crazy. All right. This is a chocolate meringue. Okay. Okay, and we made the banana meringue. This is what it would look like. Chocolate. Oh, I gotta just get the meringue in the. Yeah, you gotta Man, get the meringue. Because really it's a little good. different than. Not a lot of places have meringue. A real meringue, so. Yikes. That's good. Uh, yeah. Amy, what should we know about your family restaurant? Any last <clears throat> thoughts? Our family restaurant has been here since 1946, mm. and we have served thousands and thousands of families in our area and beyond, mm -hmm. and we take a lot of pride in doing so. I love it. I have to do one thing before I leave. You're going to think I'm crazy, but come watch me. Uh-oh. Oh, see, I'm running in everybody. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> After wolfing down so much pie, I headed back to the city to the heart of OTR to find something to wash it down. Yeah, so almost always the de is going to be the first step of the process for red wine. Once a year in the heart of Over the Rhine, the folks over at Revel get to work cranking out thousands of cases of wine. And this year, I got to help. We want to gently crush the grapes. Um, it, it's kind of the name of the game in this stage. Just be as gentle with that fruit as possible. You want those skins to really gently break down while they're fermenting, and that's when you get a lot of those good flavors created. I like that. So we just try to stay really clean in this part in terms of, you know, the fruit. You don't want a lot of leaves in there and, and stuff like that. But, you know, the, our grower, Ohio State this time, they, they just do such a great job getting a squeaky clean fruit. Alexina, he's the chief winemaker. In the back alley, they crush and clean the fruit, and in the basement of the wine bar, that's where all the magic happens. All right, we've got the grapes down here. Yep. Um, now, first thing I'm gonna do is get a sample of the juice so uh, we can do some layup testing. 
Why is that important? So latent testing is really important to know the chemistry of your juice before you get started. Um, just because if there is any adjustments that you're going to need to make chemically to the juice, you want to do it before you start the fermentation. Um, now, I don't anticipate that I'll need to, but, but that's just good data to, to track. You know, what, what were the results of, of were the, real, the results of your wine different? After using special equipment to look at sugar levels and all that jazz, it was time to add some yeast and put this baby to bed. Do we need to sing it a song or anything? Um, go to sleep, oh, yeah. go to sleep. <laughs> So we've crushed, we've done some mad science on the wine in the basement. Guess what, my favorite time. Now it's time to taste. We've got Anthony, he's one of the owners here. Uh, Revel, I, I pass this place all the time when I'm out on the weekend. I've never jumped in, but now I gotta come and jump in, drop in and check you guys out. What, what are you, who are you, all that stuff. Um, Anthony Myron, I'm one of the, like I said, one of the yeah. owners, uh, founders of Revel. Yeah. And, um, the, the cool thing about Rebel, a lot of people don't know, is that this is a uh, start in the garage. You know, uh, my dad taught me how to make wine when I was like six years old, and uh, I love making wine with my dad. Anthony's love of wine has been passed down through generations, starting back with his grandfather. But the Revel brand as we know it today wasn't developed until Anthony and his wife met Amy Coleman and her husband. Amy, so how did you run into uh, your business partners? Tell me your version of the story from the beginning with Revel. Oh, okay, well, this might call for a glass of water. Oh, I'm in for it, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. So this is actually Cab Franc, so that's what that's we're crushing yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From The Ohio State right. University. Oh, wow. which is near and dear to my heart. Um, it's where I graduated from, as well as my late husband, uh, also graduated from Ohio State University. And he, he was a partner, right? Yes, yeah, so it started with four owners, mm -hmm. uh, myself and my husband, John Coleman Jr., and Jody and Anthony. I love and that. so we were all best friends, and we started making wine together as a hobby for about 10 years. And, you know, my version of the story is that, um, you know, uh, <laughs> it just kept getting bigger and bigger. How old were, were you guys in college doing this, or how old no, were you? No, no, we were, uh, actually, uh, my husband and myself and Anthony were all working at Cincinnati Bell at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so Anthony and John were in the cubes next door to each other, and Anthony and Jody had just moved in, into town, and he didn't know anybody except for my husband. And so that's how it started. He said, hey, you want to make wine uh, this weekend? And my husband's like, well, hell yeah, I do. Rebel is pouring up and making more than a dozen different wines that can be picked up at various spots around the tri-state. And with Thanksgiving just around the corner, I asked what would pair well with your dinner. Select this wine. This is the, uh, the Sangiovese. Sangiovese is uh, going to be a great holiday wine because it's medium bodied. And when you think about medium bodied wines, um, you don't want anything too full bodied. So that's gonna, full bodied wines go really well with like a steak. Medium body is gonna be turkey. It's gonna be uh, ham, which is great for Thanksgiving. So we're still in OTR. All that wine at Revel had me thinking one thing and one thing only, chocolate. Let's go into Aglamisi's brothers. Hey, I'm Ken. Hi, Ken, my name is Randy Young. Welcome to Aglomesis, our candy, our candy factory here in Cincinnati. I'm so pumped to real life Willy Wonka, right? That's absolutely correct. <laughs> a chocolate factory right here in downtown Cincinnati. What do you got for me? You're going to be making some chocolates today. Yes. Let's go get you suited up. Ooh. The smell of sugar is getting me so excited. Okay, Ken. I said I like chocolate covered caramels. Yep. Let's make some and we're going to have this machine help us. There are several stages of dipping uh, a piece of chocolate through a machine. The first stage is we have to put a bottom on it. So I'm going to put it here on this chocolate belt. 
and they're going to get cut, the bottoms coated. Have you been doing these since the beginning, the, the 1900s? Or? We first started using a machine for dipping chocolate uh, in 1970. Before that, it was all hand dip. But because so many people want our chocolates, we couldn't keep up with the hand dipping. So we had to help, uh, had to get a machine to help us do it. And it does just as good a job as hand dipping. That was our insistence that we would not uh, do anything to diminish the quality. This has to do it just as well as we can do it by hand. How and would it you, does. How would you do this before? Just have a pan and pour some yeah, chocolate? Yeah, you, would, you just... would literally just take this in a puddle of chocolate like in here yeah. and then just deposit it like that. Oh, this is way better. Right. So this is much faster. Yeah. Now they're getting coated on the bottom and they're going to go onto a cooling plate. This plate here is cool and it's going to solidify that chocolate on the bottom. That's yeah. the first bottom. We're going to give them two bottom coatings. Two okay? bottom. Look, mine are getting caught up. That's, you're not well, going to we'll hire me, are you? Sometimes we have along. to help them out. Scoot them along, scoot them along. There we go. And then look how jaggedy they are. Look, your people do it way better. Mine are all messy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at that fountain. Just a chocolate fountain. This is a chocolate fountain, uh, actually a, a chocolate waterfall or wow. curtain of chocolate they're going through. And so you can see here, the chocolate is already solidified on the bottom, and now yeah. you're going to get a second bottom. Because we want to make sure they're nice and thick, coat, thickly coated on the bottoms there. And then they're going to go through a curtain to get the top put on. We're going to shake them a little bit just to make that coating flow over the piece Very completely beautiful. and evenly. Yeah. And this is one of our, our, our most popular pieces, sea salt being put on top of the chocolate. Can I do a sprinkle dinkle on You one? betcha. Put a pinch on there. Just like that, Michael. Put a little pinch. Perfect. Pinchy pinch. Pinchy That's pinch. right. This is so fun. Well, you know, sea salt caramels got very popular uh, when President Obama uh, made known that he liked them. It seems that presidents uh, oftentimes help the, the candy makers out. You might have uh, recall that President Reagan liked jelly beans, and they became very popular when, when he was president. Oh, so. wow. I think I could do this all day long. Oh, yeah. Bam! I'll let the latest take And now, take these over. are going into a cooling tunnel, and in about 15 minutes, they'll come out the other end, they're ready to eat. We'll Fantastic. put them in a box, and again, they'll be shipped to one of our stores, and Should we go see them? Are they ready? Let's go on down Let's and take a look. Let's go and take a look and see. Um, we got to finish the process. Look, there they are, just getting packaged up. Tom, this is quite a tour. <laughs> but it really was. So you can see they're being packaged up, and this is uh, this is a special package for uh, one of our clients who's giving these out for Christmas gifts uh, for their corporation. We're doing about 2,000 of these for this company. Fantastic. Uh, anything else we should mention while we're we're here? We got you before we leave. Well, we're here for for Cincinnati. We've always been here for Cincinnati. We're a Cincinnati company making chocolates for Cincinnati, and we hope that people will come by to any one of our retail locations or visit us online at www.agrolimesis.com and think of us uh, for your holiday gift giving needs. I like it. You're the man. This concludes this week's episode of Tri-State Travel Treasures. Make sure you check us out for the next episode. We're talking all things Christmas.